It's really hard and it is imposing real pain on a lot of Canadians and Canadian families. We absolutely understand that and our view is we want to get to the end of this road as quickly as possible. That's Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Christian Freeland offering some cold comfort yesterday. The Bank of Canada raised its key interest rate to 4.75%, its highest level since 2001. And this rate hike came as a bit of a surprise, mostly because earlier this year, the Bank of Canada said it was temporarily pausing its rate increases to see if its strategy to cool down the economy has worked. And remember, we saw eight hikes in less than a year, which is you know, something a lot of countries have been doing to tackle rising inflation. Central banks are working basically in lockstep all over the world to try and slow down their domestic economies. Well, clearly the previous increases haven't worked well enough. And if you look at the economy, there are parts of it that are still really hot. And there are three key indicators that are still causing concern. GDP, inflation, and jobs. And we'll get to that in a second, but it's all to say that yeah, the economy is hot. Too hot to manage inflation. And the bank has been battling it for a while. The goal of the Bank of Canada isn't to slow down economic activity or to make people unemployed, but it is important to recognize that as diagnostics, those things point to the fact that the Bank of Canada has not necessarily administered enough medicine yet. Our goal was not to stop inflation from rising beyond 4 or 5%. Our goal was to get it back down to 2%. Raising rates isn't necessarily the right medicine. However, it's the only medicine we have relied on since the 1980s, so damn it, we're going to keep doing it. So. Clearly, economists are split on how to battle the cost of everything going up. And some economists are even suggesting that what Canada really needs to slow things down is a recession. So let's take a quick pause to understand what that means. Here's Andrew from our very first episode of About That, Defining Recession. The technical definition of a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative growth. And we can break that down so it's not so, so mysterious. A quarter, we all know what that is, right? Just a simple way of dividing up the calendar year of 12 months into four equal parts of three months each. So two quarters is six months, but six months of negative growth. That's a weird one, right? All we mean when we say that is a decline in the economy. And we measure that decline with something called the gross domestic product or the GDP. That's most often how we refer to it as. And all that is, is the total market value of all the goods and services produced within a country. Now, if your eyes just kind of glazed right over, hang with me. It's actually really easy to explain. If you imagine all of the stuff that we make in Canada, so, you know, crops, cars, oil and gas, anything made or mined in this country, but also think about all of those service-based industries. So real estate, restaurants, even the guy who cuts your hair. If you put all of that stuff together and you add up what it's worth, that's what we mean when we say gross domestic product. Now Canada's GDP last year was something like $2 trillion. I think, I think it was actually like $1.9 trillion. And that's the number we use chiefly to try to gauge, try to measure how strong a country's economy actually is. So when you have six months of that kind of a decline in the GDP, that's when you have a recession. So that's it, negative growth over two consecutive quarters. And typically the R word is seen as a bad thing, but is it what's needed to bring inflation down? And is that where Canada is heading? For more on this, we've got senior business correspondent Peter Armstrong. Hey, Peter. Nice to see you. Yeah, so tell me, what did you think when you saw the rate hike? I, I, I have to admit, I was surprised. I didn't think they were going to do it. I was reporting all week on the case for and the case against, mm -hmm. and I was trying to present them evenly and say they could hike, they could leave things as pat, but I actually believed that they wouldn't. And, and I'll tell you why. Because... Monetary policy takes like 18 to 24 months to work its way into the economy. We know that, what, only a third of mortgage holders have renewed at these higher rates and are already feeling the pain. Two-thirds of mortgage holders haven't even started this cycle yet. Uh, so I figured they'd take time and also just the sense that 
This was just a paper release. The next decision by the Bank of Canada is a bigger one. They have a news conference. They released their, their huge forecast, the deep dive, the monetary policy report. And I just that thought if they were going to make a move, they'd wait for that. But at the end of the day, they quite clearly felt that they couldn't afford to wait and that they had to act now. Uh, and, and that the data really do sort of require immediate action like we saw today. Right. And so what is it, like looking at all of that data, what really is it that brought them to this point, do you think? I, I mean, I'm going to tell you what they said, and then I'm going to tell you what is weird about that. What they say is the, the economic data is too hot, that you know GDP came in hotter than expected through the first quarter, through January, February, and March, mm -hmm. uh, that job growth has been sort of stubbornly immune to the sense that the economy is so, supposed to be slowing, but mostly it's that the last CPI, the last inflation report we got, showed that inflation starting to re-accelerate, that it had been going from eight to seven to six to five, and it was at 4.3, and then it jacked back up to 4.4. And I think that kind of scared everybody. The problem is, even if you look at that and take that at face value, the economy is hotter than expected. Right. But it's still pretty anemic, right? We, we know that, that GDP in March was actually at 0%, like no growth at all. Uh, you know, when you factor in all the new immigration that we had last year, the job growth that we're seeing isn't quite as spectacular as it might otherwise look. And yeah, inflation appears to have re-accelerated re on that one measure, that one sort of data point, but we have seen very real progress in getting from eight to seven to six to five. Um, and so I just assumed that that broader picture of trends would have overridden the, the, the urgency that they, they seem to have in their data. Now, they have way more data than we do. They have way more information, and they're already looking ahead to the jobs numbers that come out later this week, to the mm -hmm. CPI numbers that come out at the end of the month. Uh, and so, you know, there, there's some signal in the decision, too, about, I think, what we should be looking for in the next batches of data. Okay, and I mean, we we talked a lot about over the last year a recession, and a mm -hmm. lot of people have said that's what we need to bring the economy back down to where it needs to be. Other people are saying, you know, maybe not. Like, what are what are you hearing from experts? Well, th that same debate is still playing out, and I think it's playing within the Bank of Canada, right? The Bank of Canada has never said we need a recession. They've said we need the economy to slow, and it did, right? Mm -hmm. This time last year, the economy was expanding quite well, thank you very much. Uh, and it's gone all the way down to, as I say, 0%. A little bit better than expected through the first quarter, but it ended the quarter on a pretty sour note. We know that things have slowed since then. So we're, we're at or around zero, which is where the bank says we need to be. But if what we're saying is that's not enough, that we need to get a little bit further, well then, have the parameters of the debate changed? Have, or is the debate canon now saying, well then maybe we do need an outright recession to get inflation back under control? And that, that's again why I sort of thought they'd wait and, and make a change like this at a time when they could answer some of those questions. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see what the bank says about its, its view of where we need to get to to get inflation back under control. Right, and so that 2% target, I mean, is that a fair target to continue to aim for? <laughs> it, this is such a fascinating question, and I don't know. I mean, I, I barely know the right people to ask about this stuff, uh, but I think there needs to be a debate, right? Mm -hmm. Like, with, what Canada has is a range, the target is a range between one and 3%, with the, the target being the midpoint of that range. That's how we come up with this 2%. It's kind of arbitrary. Um, and I think the hard, the easy part was always going to be getting from eight all the way down to where we are now, around, you know, getting close to 4%. Getting from four to three, that's going to be hard. Getting from three all the way down to two, that's going to be tough. And, and I think if we're a year from now and we're between, you know, we're still hovering a little bit above 3% and the bank is saying, well, we got to keep interest rates high and that's causing all of this pain in all of these households that are struggling to keep up with their debt payments. Right. What is the point of that? And, and do we need to have a more extended debate about what the target is, what it should be, and, and what we need to do to get there? Right. And in the meantime, like you said, Canadians are feeling that pain. Where are they going to feel it the most? Well, so as I said, uh, only a third of Canadian mortgage holders have had to renew at these higher rates. Yeah. Uh, you've got a bunch of people that had variable rates that have change the amortization, so they haven't actually changed their payment yet. Those are going to come due. Uh, and in the F Financial Stability Review, the Bank of Canada released these charts showing when and how all these different kinds of mortgages are going to roll over and people are going to be forced to actually renew at higher levels. And the vast majority of the pain on that is yet to come. And you've got people in the window now that got in at the 
very lowest point in 2021 or whatever it was, and are now going to be renewing at the very highest point. And, you know, markets are pricing in another rate hike before the end of the year. You know, there, there's like a 140% chance that the, the markets assume that the Bank of Canada will raise again. The implied rate by the end of 2023 is 5%. I think the pain that we're hearing about is going to spread. And the impact of that pain is going to seep into the economy at a bunch of different levels. And then we've got to figure out what that means for economic growth, for job creation, for, you know, for, for the housing market, for everything else. Uh, and, and, and that's why getting that inflation is so under control, is so important. But you know, we're beginning to see, or we're about to see, uh, the very real sort of you know, knock-on effects of all of this. All right, well, we'll keep watching. I always come up with the good news, don't <laughs> yeah, I? Exactly. Thanks for coming in, Peter Armstrong. You bet. Nice to see you.